Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Here we are, another day, another coffee from the machine of dreams. Mm. And it's very good coffee, actually. It is good coffee. It's the yellow one. That's all I know. What's it called? I can't remember. Vol Voltesio. Voltesio. Something like that. Nespresso, for people who want to know. Mm. Last night we finished Peaky Blinders season four, five, five, five. <laughs> Epic ending. Yeah, it's good. Really enjoyed. I think I don't, I don't enjoy that season as much as the no, previous but I, season. But I think it's because it leads on to another season. Yeah. Because usually you get sort of like a villain like Billy Kimber or Sabini yeah. or the Ch Changretters. Yeah. And it like ends. Ends. Whereas this one, it feels like it's too. Two season villain. Any announcements? You doing something today? Uh, I'm doing the Western Walk today with Johnny and Lucy Vickers, which should be good. Should be fun. I'm nervous. Of course I am. Yeah. What do you need to do in it? So I've recorded myself singing what I did for love, and yeah. then everyone else is like learning the parts to like sing along with it. Um, so that's what they. So I'll, I'll like pop in at the beginning and be like, hi, everyone, and like yeah. have a chat and stuff, and then I'll go away whilst they learn the parts to what I've recorded, and then I'll come back and listen, yeah. and then I'll sing two songs, which I think, I mean, I haven't, I mean, I've got like three songs and I'm still deciding which ones I'm gonna sing, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna sing Just Keep Moving the Line and Pulled. Yeah. And then a little Q&A. Yeah, I did one uh, about a year ago. Yeah, great. this is like an abridged version because it has to be on Zoom. Yeah. So, the yeah. one was like three hours, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty long. But yeah, it's great, I had a great time. Um, have I got any, any announcements? We've got a noisy cat. Yeah, last night the cat was um, well, not, not crying, but meowing a lot. Just howling. But he doesn't do it during the day. No. During the day he'll just sit on his chair and he'll sleep and he'll have a cuddle and he'll do what, he'll do what he's doing now. Yeah. But at night time, as soon as we go upstairs to bed, I think it's because he doesn't, I think he's scared he's gonna be abandoned again. I think it's because he doesn't like feeling like the house is empty. But then when he was upstairs, he just doesn't seem to rest, does he? Yeah. It's like he doesn't like his going to sleep. But maybe it's, it could be because he's used to being outside at night. Yeah. He's not used to having like a house to roam about in. Usually he's like sat under a bush somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, so um, thanks everyone for the emails. Again, love the emails. <laughs> really good. And some fan art's been flying through the emails as well. So they're all good. Really good fan art. I think everyone's still enjoying the uh, routine that we're setting. Yeah. The, a lot of people are saying that they uh, sit down with the coffee and enjoy the morning video, then at night they enjoy the evening video to yeah. sort of end their day. So yeah, very, that's very positive. And yeah, one couple said that, I think it was a, a woman and, a, and a, her partner, like, they would watch, like he didn't know who we were. Yeah. But now he sort of knows. Yeah. And whatever we talk about, at the end of it, they sort of sit down for like half an hour and discuss their sort of thoughts on, yeah. the, on the topic. So it's pretty good Aww. that they're like doing that and getting involved. So this question, we've had it a lot. We've had it all, a lot of people have asked about this. And I think it is interesting because I don't, it's something I don't know much about, but it's something that you know much about. Okay. And it is West End as a child. Ah, okay. People are fascinated with, yeah. with how do you find a time to learn the show? what the rules and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. And this is from, uh, this question is from Katie, I'm gonna say Puddicombe? Puddicombe? Puddicombe, yeah. This question is from Katie Puddicombe. Um, and she's not, yeah, any specifics? Uh, oh yeah, something like, uh, how was the part of Little Eponine? It seems such a small part, not like any part in the West End is small, like she said. It is a small part. But <laughs> <laughs> did you get to leave once you've been, been on? Yeah, yeah, I did, but the, it got changed. So when I was a kid, the only part in the show that Little Eponine did was run on for uh, Eponine, come on dear, Eponine, come on dear. You look very well in that little blue hat, that bit. And she like pull faces at Cosette and play with yeah. the doll. Like that was it. And then I'd go home. Oh really? Yeah, Little Cosette and Little Eponine didn't bow. Whereas that changed. Um, well, it changed in the Queen's version so in, in the same version, um, when I went back as an adult, they changed it so that Little Eponine then became someone in Paris and would come on with Big Eponine. Yeah, she'd come on with Eponine. So any of the little girls who played Little Eponine would then meet up with me right before Paris started. Ooh. And I'd open the door for her and she'd crawl through the hole onto the little like 
cubby hole on the side yeah. of the stage and then I'd pull through above her. It was really cool. Yeah. And we had like little games that we played beforehand. So, going back to the start of it then, like mm -hmm. what's, this is like what you remember I guess as well. Yeah. So what was like the audition process like, I guess, let's just start like that way. Was it really okay. like chill and also, can you sort of like remember, like take us through a day? Because I know you have like chaperones and you've got to yeah. go. Like, well, you just You're testing my memory now though. Yeah. Because Eponine is going like super fast. It has to be Eponine. It okay. Be well, I remember moment. auditioning for Eponine. I remember st standing outside the Palace Theatre in a big line of kids. Yeah. And I remember there was uh, like three or four people uh, in front of us. It was like really cold. I seem to remember it being like maybe January or February. Mm. It was like freezing outside. Yeah. I think I was in my school uniform because I'd just come from school, but I was in like a big coat. Yeah. And I remember this mother made her daughter change from her school uniform into a summer's dress. Oh. And she was literally stood there like that in this bright yellow dress. Oh no. It was awful. But I remember going in and I remember, I don't remember any of the audition, but I remember being lined up and the guy going, because I, it was like you'd go in and then you'd come back out again and they would have given you a little ticket if mm. you'd gotten through to the next round. Oh. So it was all kind of like the Ebony's and Cosette's I'm pretty sure were all done on like the same day. Yeah. It was back then anyway. I only auditioned once for Ebony, but it was like you auditioned several times in that one afternoon. Yeah. And I remember coming out with a ticket and you know my parents being like, oh, it says on the ticket you've got to wait. And then you have to go back in again and they make you like sing bits and pieces again. This is uh, like, I'm just kind of, this, yeah. I've got like flashes. Like I don't remember singing anything, but obviously I must have. Yeah, you must have stopped off there. But I remember the, like, what must have been the final round where he lined up, I think it was six of us, and just went Eponine Cosette, Eponine Cosette, Eponine Cosette. Oh. And I was an Eponine. And, uh, and I remember coming out and telling my parents that I'd got it, and my mum, not not believing me, but just wanting to make a hundred percent sure that I hadn't like yeah. heard it wrong or made yeah. it up. Um, so we went to Joe Hawes, who is still a children's casting director, oh, right. um, and went up to her and said, "We just want to make sure that she's like definitely got the part." And they were like, "Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll send you an email with everything." And oh. and so I remember getting the part, but I just I don't remember like I don't know I was seven. Yeah. I was like seven or eight, so I don't remember like taking on board the fact that I just got into my first West End show. Yeah. Like it didn't, it, I didn't feel the weight of that and the gravitas of yeah. what a big deal that was. It doesn't when you're a kid though, because you don't really, no. you don't fully comprehend everything. No. You don't really, it's just like another show or you, you, yeah. you're just thinking, oh, I'll get to sing on stage. Yeah. It's like that fearless, like sort of mentality that kids have. It's yeah. like when you see him skate for the first time. They're like, like yeah. you don't care, do they? You yeah. see kids ice skating. But now, when you're an adult, you're like, I could break my face. Yeah. <laughs> I look at kids that I work with now going, was I as like switched on as you are? Because I don't remember feeling that mm. like sentient. Mm. <laughs> I remember just sort of, I don't know. I, I, when I think of myself as a kid, I think of myself as just like really stupid and mm. like bumbling through, you know what I mean? Mm. But then I meet these kids who I now work with as an adult and they're like so intelligent and so switched on. Like there's this one girl called Lucy Sherman who was uh, Jemima in Chitty. And I used to have conversations with her and just forget that she wasn't my age. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you're like 10. I don't understand how you're this like yeah. here and like, with us, like, yeah. I just don't. She was amazing. So you got the part then. Yeah. So how, like, how, so how would that affect school? Because certain days you mm. would, would be school, yeah. right? Yeah. So we'd because there was there was in any show there's usually three to five teams of children. So there would be an Eponine and a Cosette who would be like team one, and then an Eponine and Cosette team two, so on and so forth. And then they'd alternate because kids can only work so many hours a week. Yeah. Like they can't do an eight show week like adults can. Yeah. Um, so you'd be scheduled, you'd get like a big schedule through and it'd say like your name and then your your mm -hmm. date. Or it'd be like, and my uh, Cosette was a girl called Ruby Williams. So it'd be like Carrie and Ruby, Monday, Tuesday. And then there'd be like all the other kids. And then it'd be like Carrie and Ruby, Ru Carrie and Ruby, Wednesday, Thursday, the following week. So that meant any time there was a Wednesday, which was a matinee day, you'd have to have it off school. Okay. So you then have to get permission, like when you get the part, you then have to have like, I think it's like a letter written from the casting director yeah. to give to your headmistress to ask for permission to have the time off. But if your school turn around and say that you can't have that time off, 
Yeah, that so. that's the part has to go to somebody else, which is really sad. Um, but most schools are like cool with it because they'll then like use that to their advantage and be like, we've got a star in our school yeah, yeah, type yeah. thing, you know. So on yeah. the Wednesday then, would you do any school work? I'd have to go in in the morning. Into school? Into school. So I'd be at school from like, uh, whatever time school started to lay, say like half eight in the morning yeah. to maybe like 10 and then my dad would pick me up from school at like maybe 10 or 11 because I'd have to be at Les Mis at like one mm. um, and then we'd drive straight from school into London or take the train into London and then they'd hand me over to the chaperone at the stage door so we'd have to wait at the stage door and then the chaperone would come down and get us. Pretty obvious probably but I'm guessing there was no cover, like they wouldn't like double up kids, would they? Um, or would they? When I was a kid, they only doubled up in Mary Poppins. So there were there was two days a week where I would be Jane Banks, mm. and then the following two days I would still come in, but I'd sit in the dressing room. So I'd essentially be standby. Yeah. Which was amazing because it felt like I was being paid to sit and watch movies. I guess with that though, Jane Banks is a big part. Like compared oh, yeah, to like yeah. the Eponines and the Cosettes and stuff. But the they, they double up Eponines and Cosettes now. Do they? And Gavroches. Oh really? So you yeah, you have like uh, six kids. Maybe they only double up Gavroches now. Yeah, Gavroche is pretty big, isn't it? Gavroche is yeah, because he's in it like throughout. Yeah. And they've made the parts considerably bigger now as well. Mm. For all the kids. So all the kids are in it from like yeah. beginning to end. And they all bow with us now as well. Because yeah. it used to be the little Cosette and Eponine wouldn't bow until their final matinee. But now they they bow in every show, which I think is lovely, I think yeah. they should. A question that always gets asked is payment. Yeah. I saw that the other day, there was a, an email saying like, when you were a kid in the show, did you get paid? And if you did get paid, where did that money go? Like, did it go through your parents or yeah. did it go to you? Um, I can only go off of what my parents did for <laughs> me because I've heard stories of other child actors who never saw a penny of that money. Yeah. Um, but my parents had like a, a bank account for me. Yeah. Like opened a bank, yeah, set up a bank account under my name and the money went into that. And then that money went towards things like school uniforms, school trips, uh, you know, holidays and stuff. I actually lent my parents money to buy a bungalow. <laughs> when I was like 12. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think it was a lot. I think it was like 50 quid a show, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. I guess it adds up though when you're not really taking much out. Oh, when, when, when you're a kid, 50 yeah. quid a show is like the one. Yeah. All I know about like, like child actors that they get taken to like Nando's in between <laughs> yeah. like shows. Obviously, only on a matinee day. Yeah. Because you would have ate at home yeah. if you come in to do the evening show. But on like a matinee day, in between shows, the chaperone would have like money. Yeah. Which obviously that gets reimbursed by the company and they'd take all the kids out to wherever they want to go. Yeah. And I think most of the kids now want to go Nando's. Yeah. That's what I've heard about it. But was there like a place that you were like, I want to go there, please? Well, when I was in Chitty, because there were so many kids. So you had like Jeremy and Jemima, mm. but then you had like 16 other children who were the sewer children. Yeah. I think there also used to be understudies for Jeremy and Jemima in the sewer kids. Oh, yeah. So that's how they would cover Jeremy and Jemima, mm. um, but I think that's right anyway. Um, but because there were so many kids and it wasn't like you could take that many children no. to Nando's because what are the chances they'd have the space? So one chaperone would be like, I'm going to Nando's, who's coming with me? And the <laughs> other chaperone would be like, I'm going to M&S, yeah. who's coming with me? And I would always go to M&S. Yeah. Obviously Nando's didn't exist when I was a kid. It used to be uh, Garfunkel's. Yeah. Garfunkel's oh, around yeah. the corner, which I think is still there next yeah. to the Palladium. But I used to go to M&S and I, uh, I think it was like, you had like five pounds each. That was like the- To get a little meal deal. To get a little meal deal, yeah. And I always used to go for the sushi. <laughs> the little box of So sushi. bougie. Oh God, I used to love it. Such a bougie kid. That's so funny, before you were like, I don't know, I just sort of bumbled through life as a kid. I wasn't that like switched on. It's like, I had five pounds and I got sushi. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously I wasn't a child actor in terms of I wasn't like professional, but I remember one audition I had and it wasn't for, I don't think it was for a pro musical, but I think it was like a, a, a company in Manchester. Mm. And it was like a really like, you know, a, a company that was held in high regard. It might have been semi-pro or pro, I can't really remember, but I remember my mum going like, this is like, if you get this, it's amazing. And it was for Oliver. Oh. And I went in and just did my audition. 
And it was so funny, I remember it like quite vividly. I'm here to sing something, I can't remember from the show. And I was giving it like, ding, 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 like hands, I was giving it everything I had. And uh, I remember like my mum like looking through the window. I know, it's really sweet. Um, and I was a bit embarrassed because she was looking. And it turned out I didn't get the part of Oliver. I got like, just like ensemble, I think. And I, and because it was quite far from home, I like, it was one of those yeah. things like, if I got Oliver, I would have gone and done yeah. it. But because it was a really long drive from where we lived. And I didn't, I didn't do it um, in the end. But looking back, like if I had my kid and he was going in for Oliver, I'd be like, go in really timid. Like, I like how Oliver is. Yeah. Like a little bird. Yeah. A really frail bird. But my mum was like, go and own it. You know what I mean? So I was like, Jazz hands. Yeah, so I was like way over the top. So they were probably thinking at the time, like now I know as an yeah. actor, but what oh. I would have thought, I'd have gone, he's that kid's giving it, put him in the ensemble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, He'll be great and because he, he'll be giving it. stand out. Yeah. yeah. He's not an Oliver. Aww. Yeah, so I remember that audition that I had as a kid. It, and it, like I said, it, yeah, I didn't do it because I didn't get the part. And, yeah, it was a bit too far for like just ensemble. Yeah. Um, but yeah, crazy really. And I remember like having a couple of like random auditions. I had a TV audition. Oh yeah, I remember that actually. When I was like, I think I was, I think I was a bit older, so I was like 13. And I, maybe a bit older than that actually, 13, 14. And I got. This agent, I had this agent for a bit, like, who was just trying me out. I don't know how it came to about how I got this agent, but I did. And uh, I, I just auditioned for, Green, maybe Grange Hill? Is it Grange Hill? Grange Hill, yeah. Yeah. I auditioned for Grange Hill. I think that's right. Mm. Yeah. And I went, and I got the sides. It's one of those things, like, if, I, if it was me now, I'd, I'd know what I'd do, but at the time, yeah. I don't. And basically, what happened was, I got the sides at the door, I was reading them, and lo loads of lads in this room mm. just reading these sides and I went in and did it and say the, the p person I was reading for was called Dave I sat down and the camera was there and I was just reading with the cast director she was like yeah so you got Philip's sides oh god yeah, no joke and I was like what it's like yeah so you read for Philip you're right I was like oh um, mm -hmm. well, I've got Dave and they're like ah oh. well Dave's like the younger brother and you're a bit too old for you're old, too old for Dave um yeah literally and they were like Oh, I'll just read for Dave. Oh God, that's the worst. I know. The worst, but the worst, now, the worst. like if that happened now, I'd be like, oh no, actually, I'll read for I'll read for yeah, that's fine. I'll read for Philip. Just as long as you know, I'm like cold reading. Or it. Yeah. I can switch a couple of uh, slots with someone yeah. and come back in half an hour. Just yeah. give me like twenty minutes to. You know, yeah. That's what you do now. Yeah. But back then I was like, all right, I just read for this part. Okay. And I was thinking, I walked out and I was thinking, well, unless I was like nailed it, which yeah. I don't think I would have nailed it. They're not going to go, well, he's perfect, but I was reading for the wrong part. Yeah. yeah. So that was another audition I had as a kid. Right, everyone, that's it. That is being a kid actor, which is pretty fun. Yeah. Do you miss it? No. I prefer it now. Yeah. I miss the fearlessness. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. It's much better now. Yeah. Get paid more. Yeah. Right, everyone. Bye. Bye. Be safe out there. Don't. Don't eat your fingers without cheese on your face. That's maybe the most random one yet. <laughs> Bye! Bye.